In this video, we're going to take a look at how to find an angle using the primary trigonometric ratios, that is sine, cos, and tan, with a calculator. And as you can see, I have three different calculators set up on the screen here for you, and that's to show you the different scenarios that can occur. And the first model is a Casio calculator that's been set up for what is called math input, or sometimes called natural input. And the second calculator is a sharp model that's been set up for what is called a line input. Now those input modes on those two calculators can be switched. I've just set it up this way to show you the difference. And finally, the last calculator here is an iPhone calculator. And that would also represent what you see on any single line display calculator, which is usually what you get with a cell phone. Okay, so let's take a look at our example here. We have a triangle and we're asked to find the value of this angle theta to the nearest degree. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use the primary trigonometric ratios. And the question is, which one do we use? Well, for this angle theta, three over here would be the opposite side length and seven is the hypotenuse. So we want to use the trigonometric ratio that uses opposite and hypotenuse. And of course that is sine. So we'll set that up as follows. The sine of theta equals three over seven. That is opposite over hypotenuse. And we want to find angle theta, so we need to isolate theta. In other words, we have to get rid of sine. How do we do that? Well, we use the inverse sine function. And specifically, we'll write theta equals sine inverse, that's the notation for it there, of 3 sevenths. And now we have to make this calculation. So how do we find the inverse sine of 3 sevenths? Well, let's take a look at our Casio model here, which is set up for math input, and you can just enter it as you see it. We can literally type sine inverse of 3 sevenths. That's the easiest way to do it. Now the sine inverse function is above the sine button, so we have to hit shift sine, and we have a bracket opened up for us, and now we can just type 3 over 7. And you can do that using the fraction button right here, but I like to just type 3 divided by 7. Now if I hit equals, I'll get my answer here, but it's a good habit to get into to close that bracket. And some calculators might insist that you close that bracket. And I hit equals and there's my answer, 25.4 degrees. Now, just as a side note, there are a couple other ways that you can enter uh, this information into the calculator to get this result. I'll just show you those very quickly here. I could do three divided by seven first and then tell the calculator to find the inverse sign. So if I just do three divided by seven and hit equals, well, it's showing it as a fraction because I'm in math input output mode, uh, but I wanna find the inverse sign of that. So I would just hit shift inverse sign. And now if I hit equals, it'll take my previous answer of three sevenths and find the inverse sign. So it works out great. Um, if that doesn't happen automatically like that with your calculator, you could go three divided by seven and then tell it, take the inverse sign of the previous answer. And there's usually an ANS button that you can hit to do that. And you know you should close the bracket and it'll still work there if you don't, but there's the answer. I'll draw your attention to one very important detail here, which applies to all of these calculators. It's important that you tell the calculator which angle mode you would like to use. Now we're using degrees for angle here. Now there are other ways of measuring angles. Um, but we want to make sure we're in degree mode. Now I can see we are because there's a little D at the top of the display here. But if you want to change that, um, there's there might be a button on your calculator that says DRG. You can try pressing that a couple times. Um, you can also go into the setup menu. For example, if I hit shift setup here, I can see DEG stands for degrees. So if I hit three there, then I get um, my degree symbol here. Okay, let's move over to the sharp model and see what happens there. Now again, we can just pretty much type it in the way we see it with this model. So we want the sine inverse of 3 sevenths. So we can do sine inverse. Again, we have to hit second function sine to access that. Now this calculator did not open up a bracket, so I'm going to open up a bracket and type in 3 divided by 7 and close the bracket. It's important you put some brackets here so your calculator knows you're taking the inverse sine of this whole three divided by seven and not trying to just take the inverse sine of three and divide by seven. And if I hit equals, again, there's the answer. Of course, with this calculator, you can do some slight modifications on that. You could do three divided by seven first, and then you can hit second function sine, and it will know to take the inverse sine of your previous answer. Okay, of course, the ANS 
button is above the equal sign here. If you hit alpha and then that, that will always access the previous answer. So if you really needed to, you could do three divided by seven, see what you get, and then tell the calculator to take the inverse sign of your previous answer. So I'd have to hit alpha and that would work out to the same number. Okay, well, that's kind of a long way to go about doing it, but it works. And last but not least, let's take a look at our iPhone or our single line display calculator. With this one, you have to do the three divided by seven first. Okay, it's kind of feels a little bit backwards, but we'll go three divided by seven and hit equals to figure out what that is. Now we need to tell the calculator to take the inverse sine of that. So how do we do it? Well, inverse sine function is kind of hidden right now. It's It goes along with the sine button. If I hit this little second function, it changes to an inverse sine button. So now when I hit that, boom, there's the answer. So no matter which way we go about making this calculation with which whichever calculator, we get an answer of approximately 25 degrees for theta. And there you go. I hope that helps.